Hello, hello. Thank you, someone, sir. It's a very warm welcome. Appreciate it. Now the awkward silence. <laughs> That's my job to fill in the silence. All right. Okay, so I'm. I'll go, sir. Are we all in a good mood today? <laughs> you a hard time, but you've been playing with our emotions this weekend. One minute you were here, then you weren't here, now you're coming back, so we just want to say thank you so much for working so hard to get I thank you very much. I was always coming, I just like to mess with you guys. No, actually it has caused quite a palaver, but I'm, I'm well aware of how many people sort of organized their, their vacations on this, and people were saved up to come here this weekend. I know it's a real killer when someone uh, pulls out. Please believe me that it's not down to the, the guest who has to pull out. It's usually for some other reason. Um, but yeah, I told them where to stick it, and so I'll be to them. <laughs> We kicked off Fan Expo with a Quidditch match, and we had James Phelps there christening the ceremony for us. Uh, we have a huge Hogwarts reunion. Every time you tweet about Harry Potter, I feel like you break the internet. <laughs> Do you feel that Harry Potter is, you know, as popular as it's ever been? Absolutely. It's only the flame of the, of the Potter fanaticism only seems to be burning brighter by the year. Um, I think we all assumed that towards the end of filming that every year slowly we have less and less support but um, you know a lot of kids who I've been signing for even today they weren't even born when we started making the first movie which makes me feel very old very quick um, but it's great there's just a, a never-ending generation of first-time readers who are getting into the book uh, it's amazing to see how lit literacy has just gone crazy since, um, since since the start of the book, so yeah, we're still waiting for everyone to stop being so passionate, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen here anytime soon, so yeah, Never. pleased to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> well then I do want to ask you, you know, sure there's a lot of franchises out there that people are diehard, but I mean it just seems with Harry Potter there's such a loyalty to the fan base, why do you think that is? Uh, it's a good question, it's something that I've been exploring for a while. Um, I spoke to Jo uh, Rowling about it actually, and she uh, had the theory that um, for Harry Potter, so much, so much of the fans, it was about their entire childhood. Most of the original fans picked it up when they were 11, 12, and it kind of stuck with them and up to their early 20s. So, as I'm sure you'd agree, some of those years, just in general, are precious and to be cherished. So they have this. Thing that reminds you of how much fun you had. It's also great for independence as well. So much of having fun is to do with other people or other you know, social activities, which is great, but there's something very uh, special about it just being one man and a book, or one woman and a book, whatever. <laughs> Well, speaking of J.K. Rowling, I think yeah. one of my favorite things that you tweeted about this year uh, was the results of being sorted into a house that really? was unexpected <laughs> on Pottermore. You're going to do this to me now? I'm, it's not even 12 o'clock. I want to see tears. I want tears. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so for see you later. Like oh my god, I'm never going to get asked back. No, that's uh, true. Yes. So for people who don't know, tell everybody what house you were sorted into on Well, yeah, I've kind of been avoiding doing this for a long time in the fear that uh, my house wouldn't be the one that I chose. Um, so we did it, I remember it was part, part of the documentary we were making, I did it just goofing around, not doing it seriously at all, and then I got, got quite into it, as you do, because the questions are pretty fun. And I answered it specifically with a mean-hearted mind, and I think the system knew that what I was trying to do. Um, I got Gryffindor. You know, are there Gryffindors in the house right now? Um. <laughs> Slytherins? I'm a Slytherin too. Uh, Ravenclaw? Puff, puff, puff. so awesome. <laughs> We're all here. Yeah, I did complain to Joe the next morning, thinking there must be some sort of system error. Uh, she said no. I love her response. She said, 
said she knew she had known for years. Yeah, it was a very sweet thing for her to say, but she didn't want to uh, didn't want to help me get out of character. Yeah. <laughs> very uh, awful. Well, we have to talk about uh, quickly the Hogwarts reunion. I mean, I've been doing conventions for a few years now, and it's I haven't heard of a big Hogwarts reunion like this before. You have the Phelps twins coming, Rupert Grint's coming, you are coming. How cool is that going to be for you? Yeah. It's amazing for us, and I hope it's amazing for you too. This is the first time that all four of us have been back together in a long time. Certainly, I know Rupert's never done a convention period. Um, we've been convincing him for years to come, uh, and we spoke to him a few weeks ago and said that Toronto was one of our favourite uh, conventions. <laughs> Incredibly friendly, really passionate, uh, very polite, but also very. <laughs> well, is that a joke? Canadians are known to be very nice. Yeah, but you, you, you certainly are uh, uh, lovely people. So uh, we're all excited. We can't wait to kind of get the chance to collectively um, say thank you to you all and also give each other some childhood banter <laughs> that we haven't seen for a while. So yeah. So exciting. Okay, well, this is a perfect time then. Uh, if you guys have questions, which I'm sure you do, we have Gordon over here. You can line up. And we also have Stefano right over here. So if you guys want Who's excited to see Rupert Grin? Did you give him any pointers or like any advice about coming to a convention? For the first time? Actually, he texted me this morning. He said he's not going to be able to make it. He's washing his hair tomorrow. <laughs> I think he had to feed his turtle the day after this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's start right over here. Hi, uh, you're often portrayed as a thief or are not such a nice character in many films. Uh, do you prefer playing a mean character or a nice one? Uh, yeah, I do, to be honest. There's, there's something about being a uh, slimy little git that you know. Um, I always think it's fun to play someone as different as possible from your actual kind of day-to-day -day self. Um, and it's, it is a lot more fun when you get to play some of these violent, vicious, angry, annoying people. Because, you know, ultimately they're the ones who are... It's the ones who are arrogant, but usually the most insecure, and the ones who sort of lash out to violence that have probably had violence used upon them over the years. So it's always fun to try and make the person seem as normal as, per, as possible and try and kind of see what the underlying issues are. Good question. Love your cosplay. Uh, yeah. Right over to the left. Hi. Uh, oh, wow. Um, I was just wondering if with all of the years that you have with working in film, if you've adopted any sort of um, techniques that would help you to develop your characters because they're all so different from one another. Um. I think, I think I did go through a bit of a time where I was leaving acting as a kid and started to do it more in an adult sense. Um, where I worked with lots of actors who had various different uh, methods or routines or vocal warm-ups or dancing on the spot or ser seriously weird stuff. If you look at, if you look, I'm not going to try and replicate it for you now, but some actors, I think sure. they just start doing like star jumps and oh wee, oh wee, oh wee, oh wee. <laughs> Like I said, it's pretty mad. Rupert, actually, that's his, uh, that's his... <laughs> Tell us more, tell us more. I'm going to use this again as Tim Saturday night. Well, he does this bizarre thing. He drops his trousers. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I actually, you know, more recently, have just tried to install the same sort of approach to it that we had with Harry Potter, where obviously, you know, know your character, know the story, but also be as free as, a, as an eight-year-old or a ten-year-old can be and not try to overthink it and um, not try to be too self-critical and just kind of go out there and enjoy it and usually nine times out of ten if you are having fun then it, it comes across as pretty natural but uh, saying that when I watch my stuff back I think it's horrendous so... <laughs> Do you have time watching yourself back? I know a lot of actors can. Uh, I don't enjoy it. Uh, uh, yeah. I, mean, I saw Chamber of Secrets the other day and just thought, oh my god. <laughs> but we were young, so that's my excuse. You're so cute with your blue blonde hair. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Hi, I'm Jessica Lange. I'm a 
Which was your favorite Harry Potter movie to act in and why? Ah, it's, it's tough, really, to pick one. Um, is that a fellow Malfoy? My eyes aren't good. It is. Hello. <laughs> Ten points. <laughs> Say the, um, the, the sort of sixth one and onwards, really. Half Blood Prince is probably my favourite. Um, it was one of the films that I had the most sort of consistent block of filming. Before that, it was always sort of one week on, two weeks off. And as much as my pop, my hair colour was a popular choice at school, um, I'd much rather have been on set working with the, all the other cast and stuff. So, yeah, the Half Blood Prince was definitely a massive learning curve in my. Uh, my Potter saga. You still had a wide range of emotions in that film, too. Yeah, yeah. it's got nothing, nothing to do with that. I had to wear a blood pack on my chest. So I was like, <laughs> okay, hey, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello, lovely. Um, oh. <laughs> um, so it's been rumored that you're also kind of a nerd yourself and you're into other things other than Harry Potter, like Star Wars. Is it true you have your own Stormtrooper costume and you've like been a fan of the 501st and Star Wars for a while? In a word, no. <laughs> uh, I'm ashamed to say, because I know I'll be booed off the stage now, but I, I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. The Stormtrooper outfit came on me recently in a documentary that I was doing to try and discover what the uh, appeal is of, of joining a Stormtrooper march. Uh, and it was, it was fun, but I won't lie, I still felt like a bit of a prat at the end of it. Uh, but I can certainly see why people get such a kick out of it, and basically it's the same as me dressing up as a, as a wizard, it's just child's play, isn't it? So I think the longer we can uh, keep a hold of that, the, the, the better and the healthier. <laughs> Okay, so what do you geek out about then? Um, I love guitars, music. Uh, just been back from London for a couple of weeks, so I uh, had, had some good fun guitar shopping there. Um, outdoor life in general, I love being outdoors. Dogs, I, I'm just sorry if I've ignored you over there. I'm just staring at this beautiful black lab. Uh, it's taking everything in my strength not to jump down and just steal it. <laughs> So, yeah, I love dogs, I love animals of all kinds. Um, yeah, it's pretty generic, but those are kind of passions of mine. No, those are very good passions. <laughs> okay, right over here. Hey, did you, how do you like the Harry Potter land at Universal Studios? And, ha and you have gone there? Yeah, so I've had the luck of being to Orlando uh, a few times, and now they've expanded it to include Hogsmeade, um, and Diagon Alley, sorry, it's, it's amazing. I feel like, I feel like the, the mistake they made last time was they didn't realize how many people were gonna <laughs> come to see it. So now it's a bit more spread out, there's much more sort of interactive stuff that you can do rather than just rides. Uh, they've done a great job, and I recently just came back from USJ, which is the Uni um, Universal Studios in Japan, which is bizarre to see an exact replica of Hogwarts, etc., just with a thousand Japanese <laughs> and they're die hard it's, it's, it was like 94 degrees or something stupid very very hot and they're all head to toe robes gowns ties yeah they were very uh, they were very impressed that we were there and also heartbroken that my hair was no longer blonde <laughs> and I think they're building a new one at the moment in Los Angeles so it's good to know that if any of us uh, James, Ollie, Rupert, and I, if it all dries up, we, we've got a job. <laughs> Getting on rides and stuff. So. What do you think of the butterbeer? Did you, you try? Do you like it? Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> to be deadly honest. It is nice, but it is incredibly sickly. I feel like they put half a bag of sugar in it. Uh, yeah, it's like 8,000 calories. No, I'm joking. Yeah. No, it is actually. The frozen butterbeer is, um, is pretty tasty. Hi! Hello! I'm trying not to fangirl right now. Um, but I have a character question. Because Draco was the owner of the Elder Wand for a while in Deathly Hollows, if he knew and he had the Elder Wand, do you think he'd do anything? And if he did do something, what do you think he'd do? Did you hear the whole answer? If he had had the Elder Wand earlier? Is that... Yeah, if he knew that he was the owner and he actually had it. Elder Wand, okay, yeah. yes. Elder Wand, yes. So what would you do with that, with that power? Me? 
Draco, right? Both of you oh, like both. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Put me on the spot by then. Uh, I, I don't know, something like that does slightly terrify me. Uh, it's probably something that I would think about so, so much and end up doing nothing. <laughs> and then, I don't know, end up giving it to my dad. <laughs> God knows what he'd do with it. So. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and Tom is equally scared of that sort of stuff. I, I, would, I would simply hand it in. Sorry for the most boring answer. That's hilarious. What about you? What would you do with it? Well, I'd probably fix Harry's wand because he kind of had it broken and then he decided to get rid of the Elder Wand before fixing it in the movie, so I wish they added that in the movie. In the book, he fixed his wand, but, you know, that was a really important wand. So funny, because that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I just didn't know if you were, like, knowledgeable enough of the whole thing. But thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you're a fan. My thoughts exactly. Hey Tom. Hey, how's it going, man? Out of all the Harry Potter films, who's your favorite actor to work with on the Harry Potter series? You're setting me up for a fall here, aren't you? Because <laughs> it's not Rupert and it's not James and Orange. I'm so tired. <laughs> um, it is a tough one because we really are sort of a, a, an awkward, all over the shop family. Excuse the sort of pun, but um, you know we've all had different years together, I suppose. Earlier on, I, I hung out a lot with. Uh, Josh and Jamie and Matt Lewis, and then as the years went on, we all kind of got closer and closer. But I had a lot of fun with Jason and Isaac, who plays my dad. He certainly probably taught me the most as far as how to uh, hold yourself on an offset, and he really taught me as well how to deal with screaming fans running up to me. I was pretty scared of it when I was a kid, and he just, he, one of the great things he did when he had, when we had kids on um, set, Alan Rickman was really good at this as well as Snape. Is that uh, I would always be, hi, nice to meet you guys, welcome to Hogwarts. And they're obviously hugging Rupert, hugging Daniel, not hugging me. <laughs> they're like, back off, man, this is weird. Like, why is he being so friendly? Uh, and Alan Rickman would just come up and slap them on the back of the head and say, duck your shirt, didn't you, boy? And Lucius, uh, Jason was exactly the same, really, just sort of hurling abuse at six-year-old children. <laughs> Which turns out to be exactly what they wanted. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of, lot of fun working with those guys. Good question. Uh, can I have a hug? Well, I would love to say yes. Only if this lady will let me hug her dog. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's a, uh, I can't. I would love to, my darling, but I fear I might start off a, a, um, a, hug off. a recurring question. Yes. Can I ask a different question then? Absolutely. What are your Don't go with a kiss. <laughs> what are your favorite memories in Canada? Come again? What are your favorite memories in Canada? Uh, many happy memories in Canada. Um, I came there every year for about five years um, when I was 21 on a fishing trip. Believe it or not, well, we used to land in Ottawa and drive uh, down to the river, uh, you know, the St. Lawrence River that borders between New York and New and we'd fish there, which was, which was great fun. It sounds boring, but trust me, it's a beautiful part of the world up there. And um, and then I spent eight weeks in Vancouver a couple of years ago shooting Planet of the Apes. Really, really enjoyed Vancouver. Uh, I, I've never had a bad experience in Canada, not yet, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's always exciting to come back here. I like to think you guys have the uh, passion of, uh, of, of some other North American countries, but the politeness of, of the less North American countries. <laughs> so, the, um, oh, it's a huge country. Hello. Um, so if you had to choose between the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, or the Invisibility Cloak, which one would you choose? Crikey. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a better answer than this, but the Invisibility uh, Cloak still kind of... someone that gets my mind racing about where the possibilities could lead to. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah, it's probably better stuff to be done with the others, but how about yourself? You've clearly given it some thought. 
Um, so that I could do magic and stuff. <laughs> I blame you not. That sounds like a very good answer. Thank you for your question, lovely. Play any other character other than Draco Malfoy and Harry Potter, who would you play and why? I've always thought Billy Good Hagrid. <laughs> Um, I usually say Hermione, but I don't think the beard would work. Uh, no one, to be honest with you. I really, really would struggle. Um, you know, originally when I read for the films, they dyed my hair quite a dark brown, gave me the scar. I read with the glasses, and then came in three weeks later, and I met Daniel, dyed my hair ginger, running for Rupert or Ron's role. And then four weeks later, came back, met Rupert, Daniel, and Emma. <laughs> and dyed my hair blonde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went, probably had about five auditions before before going in for um, for Draco. And um, I certainly think, well, not only did Rupert and Daniel do the job better than anyone else, I kind of feel like Draco was made for me. So if there is a chance, maybe in 20 years when they do the 4D remakes. <laughs> I'll get to play Lucius, maybe, but until then, I think I'll uh, call it a day for young Malfoy. Good question. Hi. Hello. Um, sorry to ask another Harry Potter question, but uh, so say you were stuck on a deserted island, which of the oh, Harry man. Potter characters would you take with you and why? Which of the Harry Potter character? Okay. Uh, <laughs> You have to think of survival. I mean, Astoria Greengrass is, was his wife, and she's sitting in the front row, so I should probably say that. <laughs> um, I, oh God, none of them really. They're all a pain in the eye. Do you mean as, <laughs> do you mean as characters or as the actors? Um, yeah, like characters. Ooh. Um, any, yeah, any suggestions? Hermione. Hermione. <laughs> I don't think Draco and Hermione would be the best. Not a lot that was going to happen on that island, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I'd take someone pretty resourceful. I suppose Potter's not, yeah, he'd probably be best, because I could just kick back and he'll solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> right, he never loses, so. <laughs> Who would you take, my love? Um, I mean, Luna Lovegood's my favorite character, so I'd totally love to be on an island with her, and the Weasley twins are like... All right, sorry, aren't the answer you want to go for? <laughs> trying to help. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Thanks, lovely. Hi, um, in the Harry Potter series, what was the hardest scene to film for you and why? Uh, looking back, it's kind of hard to pick one. And there's, there are loads of things that can go wrong on a film set. Um, <laughs> some of the things are more technically challenging, whether it's just lying in a particularly uncomfortable position for hours in water or being hung from cables and riding broomsticks which trust me is not as fun as it <laughs> as it looks um there's probably probably more some of the one-on-one -on -one scenes we did in the last few films with uh draco trying to kill um, dumbledore and sort of being helped by alan Rickman along the way i was very nervous about doing the scenes with with michael Dumbledore especially, because he's a very, you know, prolific actor in English history and so forth. In fact, I never, the first eight or nine takes, I didn't get the line out once. I was so nervous. There's only one line, for Christ's sake. <laughs> uh, and we were outside having a breath of fresh air, and I said to Michael, I'm really sorry about the line today. I'll get it right, I promise. And he was oblivious. He had no idea I was even getting it wrong. Uh, <laughs> He said very sweetly, <coughs> do you have any idea how much they pay me a day to be here? Keep messing up. <laughs> if you keep doing this, I'll have a new Ferrari by tomorrow. <laughs> so he was a, a great, well, not only an amazing actor, but a fantastic person to have for a youngster. He really took all the pressure off and reminded us that this is just child's play, not to be taken too seriously. Great question. Uh, first of all, I just want to say, I wanted to be a Slytherin too, I got Hufflepuff, <laughs> so... Um, Fun at all, right? My question, um, it's after being in such an iconic series like Harry Potter, was it daunting to jump into another iconic series like Planet of the Apes right after? No, oh, no, I was super excited. I thought it was, it was a joke. I genuinely was like, I, I, there's no way I can go from... 
you know, one of the biggest franchises to one of the ones that I grew up uh, loving. My dad was a Planet of the Apes super fan, so yeah, it was kind of strange. Uh, and then it was literally three, uh, three or four weeks after finishing the last film, um, we were in Italy on our first holiday that we'd had for a while, and we had to cut it short to go to Vancouver to shoot. So yeah, it was very exciting, and getting a chance to work with all the the monkeys. <laughs> or rather the human monkeys, was a lot of fun and a great lesson in uh, physical kind of performance. Andy Serkis is a real godfather of that kind of stuff, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I say my first experience as well on the set in Vancouver is there's a thing called craft services on a film set and it means basically tea, uh, in my experience in England it meant one uh, uh, tea urn one coffee urn, and like some pretty crap sandwiches once a day. Very modest, at best. First night shoot they come here, they ask me do I want anything from craft services, I just thought, oh, I wander over there. The guys had a truck. Yeah, I had gelato, this is at two in the morning on a night shoot. Waffles, pancakes, like, I was in heaven. I was just like, well, from now on, I'm only working with North America. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hello. Hi. I want to test your acting ability. Oh, no. <laughs> Picture it. You're, you're going to be very disappointed. But... <laughs> you're Draco Malfoy. First day of Hogwarts. The sorting cat goes on. It says, Hufflepuff. <laughs> Go. Piss off, mate. <laughs> Something like that, all right? <laughs> We just rip it up his head and stamp on it, I don't know. If you actually watch the first one, I'm pretty sure it doesn't even get on my head. It just hovers above it. How did I do? Cool. I'll take that. I'll take that. If there are any young ears in the room, I apologize. Hi. Hello. Um, so, besides Harry Potter, one of my favorite movies growing up was The Borrowers. Yeah. So, if you have any memories you can share from that. If you don't, I don't blame you, but... Yeah, no, my, my, my memory doesn't serve me that poorly. I have a few... Uh, that was my first film I ever did, and for those who don't know, it's about characters who are sort of six inches tall that live under the floorboards. Um, sounds weird, but it's not. <laughs> and yeah, I got a um, chance to work with... The, in that film, Jim Broadbent, was, who played my dad, he ended up being Slughorn in the last few films, which was weird. And uh, Weasley's father was, um, uh, help me out, what does he play in the film? He's, oh yeah, sorry, uh, he's the exterminator in The Borrowers, Mark, Mark Williams, so yeah, very strange kind of full circle thing there. Um, my only real memory of that is having to dye my hair ginger and curl it. But because the wig wasn't big enough, it was just the back of my head. This stayed normal, and the back was curly and ginger. <laughs> Kids loved it at school. <laughs> yeah, I seem to have been cursed with terrible haircuts from the start, really. But, uh, yeah, it was a great, great in uh, introduction to the world of making film because it was a lot of fun. Obviously, I still keep a uh, uh, like a, a nail, you know, like a hammer and nail, but it's like the size of. Me, so but keep that as a little memento of my time there. Thanks for watching though, I didn't realise that anyone has seen the borrowers over here, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Do you tend to keep little mementos from films you film? Come again? Do you tend to keep like little things, maybe steal some things from sets of films that you Yeah, uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, yes, in a word. I, I do try, yeah. Um, Harry Potter was one of our least successful ones. Rise of the Apes, I got the, and if anyone remembers, the, he had this the orange like cattle prod yes. that he basically used to sort of stun the monkeys. And You're then so mean. It ended up being his demise, because obviously that's what he gets um, electrocuted with. I got that. Nice. I got that. I got the utility bell. Um, they actually started doing searches in the cars on the, on the way out of Potter for the last three years. Really? Yeah. Um, so, I was going to try and do a Nimbus or a... But the other thing is that people think, oh, they have hundreds of wands. Like, they only have, they had 
two versions of each of our wands, one made out of foam in case we were running, and then one real one, um, one broomstick. So they were, they were pretty hard to swipe. We did think for a joke to sort of handcuff Daniel, <laughs> stick him in the trunk of our car, and <laughs> drive out and just wait to see his face. <laughs> and and he, was up, he was up for it, yeah. <laughs> We never got around to it in the end, but I always like that idea. <laughs> That's cool and scary. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, may I please give a quick, quick shout out to my cousin Karina and best friend Sana? Whoop whoop. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question is, um, throughout your career so far, um, what are some big transformations you had to go through? Um, either for your career or for yourself? What, sorry, what sort of big transformations in my life? Is that... um, for your career. Um, uh, there's certainly some technical things. I suppose I've had to apply more uh, effort towards things like accents. I think I always did a fairly dodgy American accent, but just sort of working on that, working on the regions. I always still would love to be able to do a Can Canadian accent. I love your oak in a boat. <laughs> um, so there's that sort of stuff, and there's also like learning Harry Potter, we were blessed with a lot of time, which makes, make, gives you sort of freedom to muck it up and still be okay, but working on television shows where they do sort of nine, ten pages a day, just to give you an idea, Harry Potter would be lucky if we did a quarter of a page in a day. <laughs> so you really have to know your stuff, get on there and kind of get on with it. So, um, yeah, just, I suppose it's a bit like being a good driver. A good driver can get in any car, whether it's brand new or it's, or it's old, and can figure it out pretty quickly. That's the kind of stuff that I think the adults on, on Potter sort of subconsciously were teaching us about how to be present, be ready, you know, how to work with other actors, either ones who have worked a lot or ones who haven't. It's always kind of a, a new, new situation. Thank you. Princess Leia, you're up. Hi, Tom. Hello. So Sorry, I don't know like a Star Wars greeting. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. She's the best character. Oh. Okay. These so, are both film, right? Go on. My friends and I have always been curious if the Harry Potter actors have ever seen a very Potter musical on YouTube. So I'm just asking if you have ever seen it, and if so, what's your opinion on it? A very what? A very Potter musical. Of course I've seen it. <laughs> Yeah, I, get, I got asked that for a couple of years at conventions before I finally said, all right, fine, I'm just going to watch this, this two-minute clip. It's like 90 minutes, man, right? like two hours long. Uh, yeah, very amusing. It's, it always stuns me and excites me, what the sort of the inspiration that watching either the films or reading the books has given, has given people. Um, that being a great example, I think, is it Laura, Laura Lopez? Laura Lopez, who does a Marvel. I think she should have played Malfoy. I should have played uh, but I know lots of kids have written their own stories off the back of it, um, some dodgier than others, uh, <laughs> some pictures. <laughs> I'm saying that people have been inspired to draw their favourite characters, some of them doing things they shouldn't. Uh, but no, it's, it's great. I think that, that not only is there a lot of pleasure in um, reading and, and watching the films and books, it usually inspires them to do to want to do their own thing, so good on them. Thank you. Hi Tom, uh, thanks for being here Hello. today. I wanted to ask about Belle and what your experiences on that were and if there are any differences with period acting that you acquired. Um, yeah, it was great fun. I mean, he, he, he is, a, again, a particularly slimy, nasty little uh, git. But the nice thing of is that he really represents the attitudes and times of that period. He wasn't a nasty person then, he was completely the average thought, which is, which is, which is quite nice and also quite uh, a reminder that just because you're saying horrible things, you don't actually have to be a horrible person. He's just been brainwashed essentially to what he thinks is right. Um, the period side of things was more physical stuff, you know, how to walk without slouching, uh, and how to walk with a cane. I'm not just doing a hand gesture there. Uh, yeah, and lots of sort of, you know, how to eat. It sounds weird, how to eat, how to drink. Um, I, I won't bore you with the ins and outs of it, but a lot of sort of etiquette stuff of how, when, when and how you doff your cap, etc., uh, etc. Et um, yeah, I shan't ramble on, but stuff like that. Thank you. 
Thanks, lovely. Okay, so we only have time for a couple of more questions. I'm so sorry, but let's get right to it. Right over here. Hey, Tom. Hello. Um, my daughter's a little shy, but I had a question. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Hello, lovely. <laughs> Don't be shy. Um, she was wondering, uh, since you worked in the inner circle of like Harry Potter, how is the transition with the Dumbledores going from Richard Harris to Michael Gambon? Um, one of the cool things about the Harry Potter universe was that everyone was there, except for that one instance when Richard Harris obviously couldn't be there, and then that role had to be taken over. What was that like for all you guys? I think it was it was as natural as, as it could have been. We were all obviously very upset about, about Richard um, passing. Um, not only is he a legendary actor, he also felt like our sort of headmaster. On the, when he spoke, everyone listened, to put it that way. Uh, <laughs> But he also kept himself quite separate, um, sometimes on off set, so we, we, I won't lie and say that we had lots of time to kind of bond uh, as much as we would have liked to have. But when Michael came in, he, uh, anyone who knows Michael or has seen him um, off screen, he's a bigger than life type character and he likes to wind people up straight away, so you know, he, he, before you know it, he's uh, making fun of you in front of all your friends. Which is usually the quickest way that a Brit will try and endear themselves to you. Uh, but no, it was great. He was a lot of fun and as the act, acting got more serious over the years for us youngsters, he, he really helped us in reminding us that this should be fun. Let's not take everything too seriously. Thank you, mate. Great. Hi, Tom. Hello. Uh, quick question. If you could use the time turner to go back to any time when filming, when would you oh, go back I, to? I need to, I need to ponder after this QA. You've given me some real food for thought, haven't you? Uh, go back in any time. Um, I mean, I'm just going to say the most ridiculous thing now, I know. But I would, I would quite like to see um, the day when we invented the wheel. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to see the scenario which the sort of, you know, the cavemen, whatever they're called, uh, figured it out, you know, like push the rock over and it goes like a wheel. Because that's a big breakthrough in the human... Uh, it's not giggle at how big of a... You know, it's that. Fire, the first fish that was caught. I mean, I'm, I know it sounds stupid, but I'm quite fascinated with the idea of these stories, which obviously can never be told truly. We have to sort of use our imagination and think about it. But yeah, those would be fun. You, you were thinking something of a much more pottery answer, weren't you? No, that's no? perfect. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, round of applause for an answer, please. Thank you. Hello. I was just wondering if there were any pranks pulled on the set of Harry Potter, and if so, were you the victim of a prank, the prankster, or a bystander? I was the leader, mate. <laughs> I was the ringleader. No, um, we were all fairly well trained, I like to think. We had a um, first director assistant on the first few films called Chris Carreras, who had a large whistle, and that was his way of shutting us up, basically. So we always feared this man and his... Uh, Neon whistle. Um, nevertheless, lots of pranks were done. You know the usual things of turning the sugar into salt. And uh, one of the old classics was changing whoever's phone it was into um, Arabic. Because once you change your language into Arabic or Cyrillic or whatever it may be, it's very hard to turn it back. <laughs> So yeah, we kind of messed with a few, but I think Dan did that about 12 times to Robbie Coltrane. <laughs> um, Rupert was always good for a, a laugh as well. You can, you can bring this up with him that he was incapable of getting through a scene without getting the giggles <laughs> for absolutely no reason whatsoever. <laughs> and as soon as the pressure was put on him, it was like, okay, Rupert, please just don't laugh immediately, you crack up. They invented a red card system where if anyone's phone went off or if anyone laughed during a take, it would be 10 pounds in the bucket that would go to charity at the end. I think he needed over 2,000 pounds. That's not a joke, yeah. He needed, I think half of his wages on that film were given to the, uh, Actually, that's a lie. But yeah. Thank you. And last question here. Oh, the pressure's on now. Ooh, maybe, yeah. um, Give me an easy one. So my question is, it can be regarding the Harry Potter film, but what's the best advice you've gotten from J.K. Rowling? Whether it's about being Draco or just life in general. Wow. Um, 
You know what? I don't think there's ever been a sort of a proverb or a nice little analogy that I can give it to you in. It's, I'm, I'm trying to look back at the, the 10 years and, and find out what's the, what was the most important thing they said. Um, I, I mean, I don't know who taught it to me, but I definitely learned it over the years to, you know, we're, everyone is the same. We're all the same people. You know, we all do different things, but not to let barriers or countries or Colors, creeds, ages, whatever, make any difference because ultimately we're all the, you know, we're all the same, all from the same, um, all from the same place, and just to love and respect everyone, and, and there's not really much merit in hating. So, that sounds. Yeah. Right, yeah. Sorry, I'm preaching. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, that was a perfect last question. Thank you so much. And is there anything? Say yeah, just again, like thank you so much for the constant support. Seriously, none of us would be in this kind of position if it wasn't for your endless um, support and wonder. So, thanks again, guys, and thanks for having me.